Angeles, Cal Hi. Other action figures each sold separately. From the court. Her. Oh, yeah. Judy, get the door. It must be Cousin Willie. Okay. Hi. Want some? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Ah, there we go. Something chill to watch. The following video is rated R and is intended for an adult audience. So if you're under 18, take a fucking hike, eh? As this video may contain adult themes and situations, strong language and opinions, good and <laughs> bad advice, cannabis cultivation and consumption. So as long as you're a responsible adult, kick back, spark one up, and enjoy the show. And there we go. <laughs> Hi everybody, Canna Beard Grows here. How the heck are you doing? I hope you're well. Welcome to Friday Night Gardening, or what's growing on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was fooling around with my microphone at the last second, and I couldn't figure out, I had no power at the very last second, and uh, I'd silly, like, put my battery in backwards. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so today we've got some, we've got some growth. Yeah. Uh, deep water culture versus the soil. It's happening. It's doing pretty well. Oh. Yeah, we better clear off those dabs from last time. Even though I could probably uh, uh, utilize that again. Um, I could talk about how I don't like pH pens. Uh, I can talk about how right now I uh, can be from bad experience. I don't like pH pens. I have had nothing but troubles with pH pens. Um, so far, I've got one pH pen that has been holding its water so far. Uh, I've done multiple tests to see if the calibration was on, just to sort of make sure, because every pen I've ever had has drifted drastically. And this one so far hasn't. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit when we get into it. We'll actually test the water. Uh, we'll do the parts per million on uh, what's going on in here. I'll talk about uh, some root rot issues that I just faced. Uh, we'll check the pH and the temperature and talk about the water chemistry just a little bit. Um, certified old guy. Sorry, I'll have my daughter do it. Hey, no worries. No worries. All good. All good. But I'm glad I'm actually impressed at how quickly you got that door. Big, big shout out to Run Chicken, the company who helped me do a big giveaway on my other channel. Speaking of which, my other channel, I just launched a video literally minutes before I went live on this show. I probably should have timed it out a little bit better and maybe staggered them, but whatever. There's a brand new video over on my Small Backyard Homestead. That's what it's called, Small Backyard Homestead. If you're looking it up, it's just going to be a little icon, the name of it, with like a little house and a cannabis leaf and a rabbit and some chickens. Um, little cartoon picture. It's pretty easy to spot, but uh, we're hard to find. That's a weird thing. Even if you type in the exact words, it still doesn't propagate very well. YouTube is a strange place. Anyway, we're here to talk about cannabis today. This is the cannabis channel, not the chicken channel. <laughs> ah, so... I've, I, first off thing I gotta say is so far I'm actually quite impressed with deep water culture. I knew I was gonna be a little I thought it was gonna be a little scarier than it was going in. Uh, I've already faced some sort of major hurdles right away. Uh, some of the major major hurdles that pretty much anybody in deep water culture faces right off the bat major pH swings having a hard time stabilizing pH not knowing what was going on and what was the rationality for that turns out it was my hydroton pellets they needed to be balanced a lot better took a while but I got it then this week we got some root rot I noticed that one of my plants come on in here let's take a quick let's take a closer look Whoa. I noticed that one of my plants down here, was looking a little bit cranky. I was like, whoa, it's it's yellowing. What's happening? What's happening? The other one looks pretty much fine, but this one here was doing something funky. I did take an extra leaf off, by the way. There is a missing big broad leaf off that was looking pretty, pretty haggard. As you can see, this leaf right here is also looking somewhat haggard. 
And the reason for that was, is I got some first stage root rot happening in this system. This one was fine, but this one right here was giving me a little something funky. I noticed a very slight smell in this room when I came in here one day, and I noticed that that looked pretty grumpy. And I lifted up this one and looked in the water, looked okay. Look, lifted that one up, looked okay. Didn't even dawn on me that that's probably where the smell was coming from because it was just sort of in the room, but it looked kind of okay. I figured, well, I did just defoliate a couple things. I took a, I took a leaf off the bottom. Maybe it's just pissed off at me or something. So I gave it a day. It looked worse the next day. I said, okay, what's going on? I lifted it up and the roots were had a little bit of brown on them. We'll show you right now what they look like. There we go. You can still see a little bit of brown going on on there for sure. Um, I have put some hydrogen peroxide in here. I sprayed the roots a little bit. I should have probably done a proper dip, but I cleaned the water out and added just a little bit of the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I can't remember the exact measurements of what I put in there, but it was whatever the internet told me. And I put a little bit in here too, just to sort of compensate but i was having no problems with this one we got no root rot on this system look at the roots on this one as a matter of fact look at those puppies woo doggy just freaking coming everywhere we got roots all over the place in that one looking good recovering definitely not good but if you look at the top the top new stuff is fresh and clean so whatever growth we've had in the last 24 hours is looking good the old stuff, I'm just going to leave those leaves on until they look a little bit worse. But that is what it is. <clears throat> Over here, we've got um, one of... The, these are all the same plants, by the way. In case anybody doesn't know, these are all the same things. Uh, CBD cheese. It's, a, it's a, a, a half CBD, half THC. One to one, somewhere in the 8 to 10% range. Not huge, but I really enjoy the flavor of it. I enjoy the buzz and I enjoy the, I enjoy the high CBD of, of it for sure. Uh, this little one here, we had a problem with that one right out the gate. It is maintaining its little tiny stubby nature. I have come across a couple of phenos. Um, I've, I've grown this plant a lot of times and uh, there every once in a while you get a little tiny runt. That does happen. So I'm not really concerned. I kind of wished it was in that pot so that I could have these two pots that were the same, but it is what it is. That one's doing well. This one's doing well. I mean, you know, well, when you look at it like this, though, look at this dead on, right? Oops, where is that? Right there. Yeah, looking good, right? Looking healthy. It's got the nice color on it, everything like that. But then you jump over here and look at this, the same same plant there's no no mistaking that this one is shed almost twice the size man this one here's grown a little bit this week that one hasn't grown at all in the last week you're you are correct about that that one hasn't budged an inch this one and this one have grown a little bit but not much um i am definitely definitely impressed with these uh deep water culture kits from mars hydro they're pretty simple. I did make that oops, I did make that modification, but again, you don't have to. It's just my weird OCD nature and I just wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. But so far, these things are working pretty darn freaking good. Um I really hope the um hydrogen peroxide does the trick and fixes fixes that little bit of an issue we have there cuz uh That'd be a shame if I lost one to frickin' some rot. Um, I do believe I'm going to make a proper soak. If it doesn't clear up in the next, if I don't see even more improvement in the next day or two, I'm going to do one of those heavy-duty soaks. That's something like, uh, it's something like, I'll have to look it up, but it's like 10 mils of this stuff, like the, the medical grade, the low, like, 3%. Um, it's something like 10 mils of this stuff per liter of water for a drip for a drench and then we just take this whole top like this out and stick it in this smaller drench bucket that's only like a little bit you know a pot or something with that kind of fluid in it and it should help um get the uh, uh kill off the 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 slime the 
rusty brown uh, uh, crap that's coming on there, man. The rot. Get rid of it a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully. Is it dab time? Yeah, I could make it dab time. I was actually just about to do a do a little foliar spray here for a second, but sure, let's have a dab. I got to go into the other room and grab my gear, though. Give me, give me one second. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. I've had a bit of a scratch in my throat. I really hope I don't have a cold coming on. I hope it's just from too much dabs. That's what I'm hoping on. Okay, there we go. But sure, why not? Dab time, dab time, motherfucking dab time, dab time, dab time. Yes, everybody, please, if you do like this show, please don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up, man. The thing is free, and it really helps show YouTube that cannabis content is a good thing. If all of my videos are getting down votes or no lump thumbs ups at all, the algorithm doesn't think it's worth anything. But if you thumb it up, it seems to like it more. So I would appreciate it if you do that. If you like it, it's a small little way you can give back. Soil temperature should be fine. Um, so here's the thing about soil temperature, or sorry, soil temperature. Bleh. Water temperature. I read soil temperature because that's what you typed. But as far as water temperature goes, I haven't had a problem yet. I might come summer. We'll see. I'm going to run this in this little tent here behind me for the summer. Um, but I haven't run into uh, temperature problems on these two buckets uh, for a reason that I'll tell you after I have my dab here. Smoking on some um, peanut butter breath that I grew in my greenhouse and outdoor last year. Cheers. Speaking of which, this is Coastal Mary Seeds. Uh, <laughs> Use my code. That's Cannabeard25. <laughs> so, when I'm done this run. Oh, yeah. Boink. That's a number. So, when I'm done this run here, I've got another project coming in here. <laughs> A different watering setup completely than any of this. Something brand new I want to test out. You got to understand this too. I'm a fairly lazy gardener. I don't want to uh, <clears throat> measure things all the time. I don't want to be constantly on helicopter parenting my cannabis. I would like to let it. Uh, uh, I do like doing that. Don't get me wrong. But... In an ideal world, it would be very nice if I could kind of set it and forget it and just check on it once in a while, make sure that everything is growing well, but it's just doing a lot of its thing automation or a lot of its things automated, like watering. Watering is the biggest thing that I fuck up on for most parts. It's either I, uh, uh, until I got this puppy anyway, it was either giving too little or too much nutrients and, um, Maybe forgetting a day here or there, you know, you let them you check it and it feels okay. And then you forget the next day. And then the third day you go to check on it, it's fucking bone dry, man. You fucking forgot. You should have gotten it the second day when it was almost dry. <clears throat> anyway, I got a new system coming in here to check out for uh, watering automation. And I'm really excited about that. And already I'm just barely into it. Already, I'm excited about these uh, uh, deep water culture kits here from Mars Hydro. And I'm going to grow them again as soon as this grow is done in this tent. So I've decided actually in that, in that time period, I'm not going to grow anything else in here right now. Um, I'm just going to leave this tank or tent kind of stagnant for now until next grow. Because I'm going to have something that's going to take over this entire area. For the next grow <clears throat> so i'm going to put those two in this tent 
and run them because I'm very curious to see these things work again and again and again. I want to kind of use them again. I'm not as scared of them. It's not as spooky. Things happen, but you can fix them. <coughs> mm. <clears throat> Um, no, I'm talking about medium temperature, like how warm are the roots? 70s are up. Yeah, see, I don't really know how to test uh, uh, soil temperature, but I will tell you this. I know what the room temperature is, and I know that water temperature generally sits approximately 10 to 12 degrees lower than room temperature. You know, it depends on, uh, there's a few factors. If the water's moving and stuff, it can stay more stable. Whereas if it's stagnant water, it can actually get to room temperature eventually. But that's a whole different story. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I just know that I keep this room in the high 70s. It sits in the high 70s, and that way my water temperature never seems to go past about the high 60s. I've had it in about a 71, I think, is the highest I've seen it so far. And that's this spring. We'll see when the summer comes. That might be a whole different ballpark. I might actually have to start throwing ice cubes or one of those uh, 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 a small water bottle with some ice in it and just go plunk to throw it in there to keep them cool during those you know, summer, method, or summer months with, with a freaking hot light over top of it. And, you know, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, I installed under canopy heating and raised the medium temperature... Oh yeah, gangster built my own DW or DWC system and it worked great. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of want to continue to mod this out. Um, I, the more I look at uh, DWC deep water culture, I, the more I already know that our DWC is the true way to go. <clears throat> as much as this is great to get into it, I think this is a wonderful kit for people to um, to get involved in deep water culture, and it's a first step, it, and it's absolutely got everything it needs and everything. Uh, by the way, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Mars Hydro. You can use my name here, <clears throat> Can of Beard. Save yourself some money on Mars Hydro products like these deep water culture kits or the lights or this beautiful new oscillating fan or some of their ventilation. They got lots and lots of tricks and gadgets for your garden. And uh, everybody likes to save a couple of bucks. So once again, use my name here like this as a code and save yourself a couple of bucks. Bam. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm impressed. I like them. Uh, although I... I the more I, <clears throat> the more I play with these, the more RDWC becomes more of a viable option. And what RDWC is is this is deep water culture. DWC RDWC is recirculating uh, deep water culture. It means you have like a third container, and then you have a pump, and there's connections between each of these. All three of them are connected like this in some sort of a loop, and one of them has a pump shooting water in one direction and that way water flows into this one mixes and then flows into the next one and this and it just keeps going like this and you get like a recycling water system that sort of goes through the whole thing due to my uh marine biology knowledge and background um i'll tell you this the larger the volume of water the easier it is to keep stable that's just a fact when you talk to anybody about aquariums, small tanks are impossible to keep stable for long periods of time. Large tanks with refugiums, super easy. Because the larger the volume, just the, 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 the slower the sways happen. So it's easier to keep them within a check. And I, I believe that the, the, the recirculating side of the deep water culture uh, would sort of add that. As well as give you a place, uh, the, larger, uh, the larger water volume um does a lot of things it allows you to only feed one system rather than multiple systems like right now i'm feeding these two separate like i'm pouring a, i'm bringing two buckets in and then i'm pouring a little bit into you and a little bit to you and then i grab the next one and a bit to you and a bit to you and i'm stirring them both up and, and then i you know test them back and forth and try to get them lined up within about the same ph and then i freaking transfer and change the water whereas with a, a recirculating system, you would just 
pour it all into the final bucket or whatever or, or whatever uh, it would just sort of fill all three of them at the same time so you have one body of water to deal with rather than multiple and um yeah larger space less sway that's that's the way i sort of look at it for sure <clears throat> something's going on with my thing i can't see something here hmm yeah i don't know what's wrong with that there's a uh, my chat is being cut off by a good portion of it here and i don't know how to get it back oh <laughs> nope it's still cutting it off i don't quite know why that's doing that actually i bet yeah i know how to fix it there we go okay that was weird <clears throat> so um yeah that's sort of where i'm at with the show today <clears throat> things are looking pretty good but i definitely had a root rot issue which again um I'm not positive on the percentages, so don't quote me on this, but it was something something in the ballpark of like 20 or 30 mils per liter um, for a soak to help kill off that, that rot that's living in those roots. And I've already changed the water and added some preventative in there. I might have to change the water again after I do a soak on this in the next day. We'll see how, how a day of this... <clears throat> this new regiment uh, uh, does first before I, I go any more drastic. <coughs> Typical greenhouses have underground heating. <coughs> Warm pipes. Yes. So, <coughs> you can get um, floor heating coils and there's a couple of uh, 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 waterproof um, cords that heat up that you can lay like I've got big soil beds in my greenhouse and I could like in theory if I didn't have already them full of soil I could lay it underneath like in sort of like a, a, a line up and down like that could sort of zigzag the area a little bit and then put the bag down and fill it with soil um, yes, I could have thermal control over that. But one of the other things is uh, soil is actually a pretty good insulator. And once it warms up pretty good, it holds its temperature pretty well. Um, it takes quite a long time for it to either warm up, though, but it also takes a while for it to cool down. So uh, I, I, I've actually been thinking about that because <clears throat> the reason I've been, I've been thinking about these kinds of things and heating is because I want to start my autoflower run in my greenhouse very, very, very soon. Like in the next, honestly, in the next two weeks, I think I'm going to start it. And right now, today, it's still a little bit cold in the greenhouse. During, like by night. By day, it's fine. But nighttime, mm, a little not 100%, I think. So, uh, I had thought about maybe putting a small heater in there on a timer and only running it from... Well, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night until 6 in the morning or something like that. Um, that feels really wasteful, though. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm uh, I'm thinking about it. I I'm doing a couple of different things to change uh, the setup in my greenhouse anyway. And to be honest, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to need it because I'm going to be... Uh, well, I guess it's a nighttime thing. I was going to say I'm going to be utilizing lights my old mars hydro uh bars uh above each of the beds to come on early in the morning and then come on in the late evening to prolong the sunshine because i'm using auto flowers i want to run auto flowers in the greenhouse and i want to utilize that sun as much as possible but i want to buffer the morning and the night and create a longer um a longer uh light cycle for them to give them as much of a fighting chances i can without using a whole bunch of power either but that's a whole different story whole different stories anyway um that's about all i got for today oh i had another dab and i forgot to count it 
Um, so, oh, I hit the thing and it didn't count it. What's going on? There we go. So don't forget to like this video if you do like it. Check out some of my other videos if you want to see a bit more about how I started this deep water culture setup and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, my backyard uh, homestead, small backyard homestead channel. Uh, just posted a brand new video like 20 minutes ago, an hour ago. So go check that out. Thank you very much. Um, subscribe if you're not already. I will be uh, I will be live on Sunday at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time here on YouTube uh, and on Twitch at the same time, like dual cast, simulcast or whatever you call it, uh, for the Sunday session. So every Sunday we get nice and baked and have some coffee and chat about the week and look at some funny shit on Reddit or something like that. <laughs> Always read weed related, but it is what it is. Um, I'll see you then or I'll see you sooner if you follow me on Twitch because I'll probably be gaming later. Um, have a good one. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Cheers. Thank you.